What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Aquamain YouTube channel. I just recently got a 22 gallon long rimless tank and that'll be in some upcoming videos on what I'm doing with that tank and the aquascape. In the past two months, I've been really nerding out on how to do plant tissue cultures and it's pretty extensive, but totally doable. So today I'm gonna do an introduction to DIY aquatic plant tissue cultures and how I do them at home. I'm doing it for about $200 or less. So my wife and I went hiking by a river and I found an Acmella repens plant. So I just cut off uh, a few shoots from it and brought it home, sterilized it, and put it into a sterilized media cup, and it's growing right here. It's in a rooting media right now, but I'm going to move it into a multiplication media, and I'm going to make a lot of Acamella Repens tissue cultures. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the steps to tissue culturing, and I'm going to make some plant tissue culture media that we can pour into cups and sterilize. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to put plants into the sterile media while being sterilized. So being sterile is the most important part of tissue culturing. Uh, I take media that I've mixed up, it's a liquid, and I use gel and gum instead of agar, but you can use agar too, and I pour that in there, and then I pour that into each cup, and then I sterilize it in a pressure cooker. After that, I take it out of the pressure cooker and let it dry, and it, it kind of gels up like jello. Once that's all solidified, I bring that over to a still air box still air box. It's basically a huge Tupperware I've turned on its side. I dremeled out holes for where my hands can go and I sterilized the whole inside of it and that's where I put the sterilized plants, open the lid, put the plant in and then close the lid and everything's sterile inside this cup. If it's not sterile, uh, spores from the air can land on the gel and can grow mold, fungus, mildew, all that good stuff. And that's definitely not accepted in tissue culturing. I have a few contaminated cups that I can show you. There's a contamination rate where some of the cups will be contaminated, but you can save the plant from that and just take it out and re-disinfect it and try again. I'll go over all of what I use for the media and stuff in this video. But first, I want to talk about the four steps in professional tissue culturing. These are like steps that they go by. Uh, five steps if you count step zero. Step zero is choosing your stock plant and preparing it. Basically, just finding a plant, cutting off nodes, and preparing those nodes for uh, stage one. Stage one is disinfecting the X plants. To disinfect the plants that I use, I use 20% bleach with distilled water in a jar. I take all my plant cuttings, put it in there, shake it for 10 minutes, and just let it sit until I'm ready to bring it into the still air box. I take them out of the 20% bleach, wash them off in some sterile water that I sterilized in the pressure cooker with these. And I take the plant out of the jar with bleach, wash it off in the sterile water, and then boom, put it right into the tissue culture and it's good. There's other ways to sterilize. You can use hydrogen peroxide, stuff like that. Also, before you put it in the jar with the bleach and shake it for 10 minutes, you can run it under just tap water for about an, even an hour just to get off what you can that way before you go to the next step. Contamination happens the most from the actual plant, like not getting the plant sterilized enough. With this Acmella Repens, I just put it in 20% bleach, like I said, shake it up for 10 minutes, bring that jar into my still air box after I've like disinfected the outside with disinfecting wipes. Put that in the still air box and then move it all over into the cup. And this cup has no contaminations. I'm soon gonna move these plants that have grown in here into a multiplication media so that it can shoot out more shoots and I'll have more plant to work with. I'll get into that a little later. So that's step one, disinfecting the X plants. Uh, they're called X plants. Any part of the plant that you take to do tissue culture with is called an X plant. Step two is multiplication. Okay, so once we have our X plant sterilized, we're gonna move it into a multiplication media. To talk about multiplication, I need to get into plant growth regulators. So when we say we're putting a plant into multiplication media, it has a plant growth regulator in the media called cytokinin. 
Uh, cytokinin is naturally formed in plants, but you can buy it in many different forms. Uh, the cytokinin I use, I buy from either Phytotech Labs or Caseon Labs. I'll put the links in the description. Um, for cytokinin, I use BAP. It's benzo plura something six. I can't pronounce it, but it's uh, for short, it's called BAP. Cytokinin, I use BAP. That makes a plant shoot out a bunch of little shoots and it makes the plant stay short. And it shoots out a bunch of these little shoots in a little clump. You'll have all these little plants coming out in a mass. So after the plant has multiplied, we move it into a rooting gel. And that's a gel that has oxen in it. Uh, Cytokinins and auxins are the main uh, plant hormones that we use in tissue culturing, uh, basically the only ones. Auxins are also a natural chemical in plants that tell the plant to root and grow taller. So when we add an auxin, I use an auxin called IBA. It's got some other long name that I can't pronounce. Um, I buy it from Phytotech Labs or Caseon Labs. It's like 15 bucks. Uh, it's a little more if you buy the liquid. The liquid has one milligram per milliliter, so it's easy to measure. But I order powder and dissolve it myself. I take 100 milligrams of powder and dissolve it into 100 milligrams of water, and then I have one milligram per liter of oxen. So I know how much I'm putting in. If you don't want to get into... Uh, dissolving your own powder and stuff because you can't just dissolve it in water it needs to be dissolved with hydrochloric acid or sodium chloride for dissolving cytokinin powder you have to use hydrochloric acid for dissolving oxen powder you use sodium hydroxide um if you don't want to get into all that you can pay a little more money like 25 bucks and have it shipped to you as a liquid uh that's kind of easier but I just ordered some powder. I'm going to try to dissolve it myself. It's a little less shipping because you got to pay for cold packs and all that. So, but if you want to get a cytokinin and an oxen, it's about 25 bucks each if you're getting the liquid form. If you're getting the powder form, it's going to be 15 bucks and you're going to get a lot of it and you can mix a lot more than you would if you ordered the liquid. So we just talked about the plant being in multiplication media where it's going to grow a bunch of little shoots. The plant is going to stay short and that's what it does in the multiplication media. Then we're going to take, we're going to make a rooting media with just oxen in it, maybe a little bit of cytokinin. And then we are going to take the plant mass with a bunch of shoots and put it into the rooting media and it's going to shoot out. It's not going to shoot shoots, but it's going to grow a lot bigger and it's going to root and it's going to fill out and grow larger because with auxins, the plant will grow larger and fill out instead of staying small and just shooting out a bunch of little shoots. So that's basically how we grow out a plant. So now on to media. So when I make plant tissue culture media, I make one liter because I buy these packets. It's called MS Media. It was uh, invented in 1962 by Marishig and Skoog. I'm sure I'm butchering those names because they're, well, I'm not butchering Skoog, but Marishig and Skoog were two dudes in 1962 who did plant tissue cultures, and they found out the exact... Uh, nutrients that plants need to grow in vitro, which means in glass, which means that's just what we call tissue, tissue culturing. But these nutrients are the exact nutrients that these plants need to grow in a tissue culture. Um, there's a hundred different kinds of MS media. There's, this is where I got confused when I was trying to start. Um, there's MS media that buffers pH. There's MS media that is made to grow tobacco plants. There's MS media that's made to grow strawberry plants. There's, and there's not really MS media for aquatic plants. So you can buy multiplication MS media, and it's going to have the cytokinins in it, the amount of cytokinins and auxins it needs to multiply. Um, it's not going to be exact for every plant, though. Every plant kind of multiplies with different ratios of cytokinin and auxin better. So you can buy MS media. It's called MS multiplication media, and you can try that to uh, multiply plants. But 
and you can buy MS Media Rooting Media. What I buy is the regular MS Media, Marishig and Skoog MS Media with sucrose. Um, sucrose is also needed in tissue culturing. You can buy media without it and just add your own sugar, but why not buy buy it with what you need? It has 3% sucrose in it, and that's basically what... That's basically like the main level of what you need in uh, tissue culturing. So what I do is I buy basic MS media without any cytokinins or auxins in it. And I add my own cytokinins and auxins. I have a little vial of cytokinins, my BAP, and a little vial of auxins, my IBA. So how the ratio works is if you have more cytokinins than auxins, your plant is going to shoot more shoots out. My last multiplication media I made, I put 2.5 milligrams per liter of cytokinin, my BAP, into it. And then I put, I think I put like 0.2 milliliters of auxin, my BAP, because it also helps if there's a little bit of auxin in with the high ratio cytokinin for multiplication. When I made my rooting media, I think I put one milliliter or 1.5 milliliters of IBA and like 0.1 milliliter of my cytokinin BAP and that was my rooting media, uh, more auxin than cytokinin. For a lot of plants, if you put equal amounts like one milliliter of IBA, one milliliter of P BAP, one milliliter each of cytokinin and auxin, uh, the plant will form a callus. Uh, a callus is a blob of undefined cells, which is cool because we can I still haven't uh, done this next, but uh, next I want to grow calluses and you can grow just a blob of undefined plant mess. And then with that blob, you can take parts of it and put it in multiplication media and shoot out shoots. And then you just have this mother blob. Uh, also, mutations happen more with uh, calluses. Um, not necessarily good mutations, but you could get like a color variant or a cool mutation that way. So that could be fun to experiment with. Um, right now, scientists use, uh, for their explants, they use meristems. Uh, it's basically the tiny little tip at the beginning of a plant that you can, that they use a microscope to take off, and that's undefined cells too, and it's already sterile, so it's easy to sterilize if, if it even needs it. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't have a microscope. I wish I did, but so I don't do meristem culture. Um, there's also an awesome book where I learned most of this. It's called Plants from Test Tubes. I forget who it's by, but really good book. A lot of good, useful information. You'll also need a pH meter to measure the pH, and you need to pH up and down it. For pH up, I use sodium hydroxide. For pH down, I use hydrochloric acid for pH down. Um, you can, I've also heard of people using baking soda and vinegar for their pH up and down, so you probably don't need to use what I use. So the pH needs to be 5.9. That's like the magic number for uh, your media. So I use a pH meter and I test it and I adjust the pH to 5.9 of the, the liquid. Then I add about three grams of gel and gum. Gel and gum stays a little more clear than uh, agar. This one's black because I put carbon in it. Carbon helps with rooting. Um, it also helps absorb some of the plant's shit that it like shits out you know what i'm saying but later in this video i'm gonna make some media so you'll be able to see that whole process now i could talk about stage two multiplication so stage one was disinfecting our x plants uh, shaking them in bleach 20 percent bleach for 10 minutes stage two is multiplication uh, the media that we made with the higher cytokinin to auxin ratio, we put into jars and then we put our X plants in there and that's multiplication. With my last plants, I left them in multiplication, some Rotala for three or three weeks, I think, and they multiplied a lot and they're now in rooting. Uh, I can show you those too. So the reason that I add my own cytokinin and auxin ratios is because every plant is different with it. Um, if you're lucky, you can go online and you can find these things called protocols where people have grown that plant in vitro before and they did a bunch of tests to see what the right cytokinin and auxin ratio is for the most proliferated shoots. I found a few on aquatic plants, Rotala, 
I even found one on baby tears. The cytokine and oxen ratio is a lot different for every plant and you'll get different results with different ratios. You can even experiment yourself on like different ratios. That's multiplication. Uh, that's probably the most complicated step to understand, but um, read that book and I mean, you'll get it. <laughs> Stage three is rooting. Sometimes this stage is omitted, like you don't even need to do it. You could just take a plant that you multiplied, throw it in your aquarium, and it'll root. But I don't like to do that. I like the plant to fill out in the cup. So rooting is when we take our oxen-based media and we take our plant that we multiplied. It's a, it'll be a little clump of a shitload of shoots. And then we put it into our rooting media and it will fill out, grow bigger, grow roots and it'll just fill out the cup and then after that you could sell it or take it put it in your aquarium whatever you want to do so step four step three is rooting in the cup uh step four is transplanting it to its home like your aquarium in this case uh, for other plants they put it in nurseries with high humidity uh, stuff like that. I think that pretty much covers it of all the steps of tissue culturing. Now I'm going to show you guys how I make my media and how I sterilize the jars and what I do in that step. In the next video, I'll be recording how to put the plants into the sterile jars and stay sterilized with it and get as little contamination as you can. I'm sure I didn't go over everything. If you have any questions in the comments, I can answer all those questions for you. So next, let me show you how I'm going to mix my next multiplication media for a lot of different plants. Okay, so now we're going to make our media. These are the different types of media that I have. This is the MS media, the basic one that I'm going to use today. I'm going to add my own cytokinins and auxins. I'm making a multiplication media, so I'm going to have more cytokinins than auxins. I'm going to do 1.5 milliliter per liter of cytokinins. Uh, I'm using BAP as my cytokinin. It's one of the most popular ones. I'm also going to be doing 0.5 milliliters IBA, which is the auxin. So I have more cytokinins than auxins, so it's going to put out more shoots instead of rooting and growing large. If you don't want to add your own cytokinins and auxins, you can try this stuff. It's a multiplication media. Uh, this is all the nutrients that we mix in. Uh, this already has uh, kinetin in it and NAA. That is a cytokinin and an auxin that is in this one. That's pretty cool too that for this that you don't need to mix it. So this can work. You're just not going to be able to tailor it to the plant, but you'll still get uh, results with it. I also have this one. It's Linsmer and Skoog uh, LS Media. Um, this one buffers at 5.7 uh, plus or minus uh, 0.2 pH. So when you pour this in, you don't need to adjust the pH. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. I have stuff rooting in this right now. So those are the three choices that I like the most. Today I'm going to be doing just the regular MS media, adding my own cytokinins and auxins, and adjusting the pH. So let's get started with that. So today I'm just going to be making 500 milliliters, half of a liter of media, because I don't want to do too many cups. I just did some before this. And this has 34.43 grams uh, in it. So I'm going to divide that by two, 17.215 grams. So I'm going to weigh that out. A uh, digital scale is good to have around for this. I'm doing half a liter, so I'm putting half of this, because this is enough for a full liter into here. Um, a lot of people do half strength media too, so for a full liter they would put half of that in there. Um, if I was doing half strength I'd put a quarter of the bag in here because I'm doing half a liter. Uh, doing half strength uh, kind of promotes rooting as well. It will kind of make the plant search for food with its roots. We'll get into this later, plant preservation mixture. So we got that. We're going to add maybe 400 milliliters of distilled water. You want to use distilled water for this. I barely have enough to do this. And I'm going to take a whisk. I'm 
and then whisk it up. All right, so first let's add our BAP. That is our cytokinin. So for this mixture, I've studied the plants I'm gonna grow and for multiplication, uh, the best ratio was 1.5 cytokinins, 1.5 milligram cytokinins per liter. Um, I'm doing half a liter, so I'm gonna do 0.75 milligrams of cytokinin. Uh, I mixed my own cytokinin, but you can buy this and it's one milligram per milliliter. That's how I mixed it. So it's really easy. I just got to add 7.5 milliliters of this. Our cytokinin. And that is in the mix. And this stuff has to stay refrigerated. Now for our IBA, I just mixed this. It's also the same one milligram per milliliter. It's pretty easy to mix IBA. You just use potassium hydroxide with a little bit of water to melt the powder and then you add distilled water. You can also order it already pre-made. That's the easier thing to do. So with our IBA, it is 0.5 milligrams per liter, and we're doing half a liter, so I'm going to do 0.25 milliliters of BAP. That's what it is. All right. So our cytokinins and auxins are in there. We have more cytokinins than auxins. That's going to trigger the plant to shoot more shoots out and grow and stay small and shoot more shoots until we move it into a higher auxin media. We'll talk about that later, but right now we're just making multiplication media. Now I'm gonna add 0.1 milliliters of plant preservation mixture. This stuff was really expensive. <laughs> I think I got, what, 10 milliliters? Yeah, for like 20 bucks or something. Um, I'm looking in how to like make this stuff myself. It says what's in it. It's a lot of ingredients. This is kind of an antifungal. It'll help us not get contaminations. I'm just putting 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of it, of a milliliter in there. Cause I gotta save this stuff. But it's usually recommended about one milliliter per liter. I didn't put that stuff in the last uh, jars that I made today, so it'll be cool to see how much that stuff helps if we'll get a lot more contaminations without it. If we don't, then I'm just going to stop using it. Alright, so now we'll take our gel and gum. This is gel and gum. Uh, you can use the agar. This stays a little more clear. So I'm going to weigh out. I usually use... Uh, three grams of this so I'm gonna do 1.5 grams because we're doing half of a liter and go 1.6 put that in there I got this on Amazon for about 15 bucks um, there's a lot of it in there I'm gonna be able to use this for a while because I only use about three grams at a time if I'm making a liter uh, I've used it quite a bit and I still got like more than half left. We'll stir that up. The thing about gel and gum, unlike agar, is it's harder to mix into the water. Um, I'm going to apply some heat. I'm going to pour it in here and heat it up for a little bit after we adjust pH. So I like to mix that up really good. So now I'm going to pour a little more water in. Till we get closer to 500 milliliters. Always start lower than what you're going for because you're adding stuff in. It's going to bring the level up. So here we have potassium hydroxide that I dissolved in water. We use this to bring pH up. I have hydrochloric acid. We use that to bring pH down. We want to go for a pH of 5.9 or 6. 4.75 it can't really decide. There we go, 4.7. So we're gonna need to bring that up. So I mixed this sodium hydroxide pretty strong, so 
we'll see how two drips does. You can also use baking soda for this. I've heard of people using baking soda. And you can also use vinegar instead of hydrochloric acid. This is just what's professionally used, so I tried it. And we're up to 5.8, 5.9. That's actually perfect, uh, but when you heat this stuff up, it drops a little bit. So I'm gonna do one more small drip if I can. That'll probably bring us up to like six. Yeah, we're at about 6.16. That's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is turn on the stove with this. I'm gonna heat it up in here a little bit just to melt the gel and gum. I washed this pan really good. Hope I don't get any floaters from it. So I don't really wanna whisk this too much cause I don't want any like metal particles from the pan getting on it. So I'll whisk it without scraping the pan. I don't know how much that would, I don't think that would hurt anything, but just keep it clean as possible. It's warming up. We don't need to like get this boiling or anything, but just warm it up so that gel and gum can kind of dissolve. If you're using agar, you don't need to do this. After we test the pH when it's hot, It'll kind of give us a, an idea of how much the pH is going to drop when we heat it up in the pressure cooker. I've never heated it up in a pot like this. I think this is going to really help dissolve everything, get it equal levels. Um, the first time I did this, I didn't heat it at all, and I got a few cups that didn't even solidify, so the gel and gum was obviously like all around, not dissolved all the way in the water. So I'm just going to pour this back in here. See we're at a 5.84 now so we dropped a little bit of pH. So you know what that means. So I guess next time I'm just going to get the pH to 6.2 and then we'll know that we're going to drop 0.2 uh, levels pH. So because that's about how much we just dropped when we heated. So we'll be at six next time. We're just gonna add one drop potassium hydroxide. I almost feel like going up higher into like 6.1, 6.2 is safer than falling into like 5.7 later. Yeah, we're at like 6.3. That's fine with me. All right, so we got it all mixed up. Let's put it in our cups. I like to mix it between each cup because of that one time where two of my cups didn't even solidify. I think because the gel and gum all sank to the bottom and I wasn't pulling that out with this. So right now I'm just doing two of these full. This is so that I can get equal levels in all the cups. Put our lids on, get them on tight. All right, so now we got 20 cups ready to be sterilized. We will sterilize these. When they come out, they'll harden and then they'll be ready to put plants in. So let me show you how to sterilize. All right, right here we have our pressure cooker. I have like wadded up tin foil under here with a plate and then I have tin foil on top of it. The reason I do that is to fill up water on the bottom and have our cups on the top. Our cups are just going to be touching a little bit of water and there's going to be water under there. So I'm going to fill it up. Alright so I filled it up with water, you can see where the level is. It's just barely coming over the, the tin foil. The cups are just going to be sitting in a little bit of water. Alright, 
Just load them just like that. With this pressure cooker, I just line this arrow up right here. Go like that. Slam it shut. Now I'm gonna turn on the heat back here. You can't see it, but I'm putting it on high. And I'm gonna let that go until it gets to 15 pounds per square inch, 15 PSI, 250 degrees. Once it hits that point, I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit and kind of control to keep it staying at 15 PSI the whole time. If you have a pressure cooker that doesn't have one of these, it'll just have one of these. And this thing will start going when there becomes too much pressure. And uh, those pressure cookers are pretty much made to stay at 15 PSI. Unless this thing's like rattling really bad, that's when you need to back off your heat. That's what this kind of is, is an indicator that there's too much pressure and it will release pressure when there's too much. Okay, so the pressure cooker's been on for a while. Uh, it's creeping up on 15 PSI right now. It's about to hit it. So I'm gonna bring the heat down. It was on high 10. I got it down on about four now. And once we hit that 15 PSI mark, we wanna set a timer for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna do 17. And now we just need to regulate the heat so it stays on 15 PSI. If it goes down, we'll turn the heat up. If it goes up, we'll turn the heat down. All right, so it's been 17 minutes. It's been pressure cooking. We're just gonna turn off the heat and slide it off the heat. and wait for that to cool down. All right, so it's cooled off. We can tell that the pressure has dropped all the way, meaning it's safe to open the pressure cooker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cups and move them directly into Ziploc bags. Uh, pro tip, the inside of Ziploc bags are sterile. It doesn't really matter that, um, like if I just took them out and put them on the table, it'll still be sterile inside the jar but I'm keeping the outside sterile because I'm gonna bring them into a still air box where I'm gonna be opening them. So I want them to remain as sterile as possible until after that point. It's still liquid and when they sit in the bags for a while on a table, they'll solidify. All right, so we have our jars and bags. You can see it's still liquid in there. I'll put this on a flat surface and they'll dry up. Here's some ones I made earlier. You can tell they're already solid. The gel's in there. This is just a different cytokinin ratio, cytokinin oxin ratio. That's why I got them labeled on top. And that's how you sterilize our media jars for tissue culture. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, like comment, subscribe if you did. Um, in the next video, I'll be showing how to sterilize the plants and put them into the media jars. Thanks for watching. Peace.